church growth on a national level is is down a little bit for what we, what used to be called the mainline churches. I think there's uh, the growth of folks who uh, have no faith, or at least claim to have no particular faith affiliation, has been on the rise. In fact, they're the fastest growing segment of our population. We're kind of bucking the trend here at First Pres. I know we've increased our membership over the last year, and uh, toward the end of this year, I think we're going to add another probably 10 new members uh, here this fall of 2013. So uh, in that respect, we're kind of uh, being countercultural here <laughs> in Athens. I think a part of that's due to, uh, again, the you know as families come and visit and they see lots of other families here, uh, we have that critical mass that sort of is inviting then, uh, plus a wonderful program. Uh, and of course, our puppet ministry, which <laughs> is uh, has been a wonderful addition to uh, to the life of our worship life together. I, th I think I've seen people be more open to new things. Uh, we've had a jazz service, which we've had a couple times now since I've been here. So different forms of music. Um, we have a wonderful organist, and Jan does a great job. But we've got people that play folk instruments, and we've got. Uh, Thai instruments, and then we've got people that are uh, jazz musicians who've contributed to the music ministry here. So that's been a, a really wonderful thing, I think, just the diversity of, of music that's uh, become part of the worship landscape now here at first. Um, I think new mission opportunities. We took a trip this summer to Washington, D.C., uh, which I think had been one of the first trips in a few years that the church had taken outside of the Appalachian region here. So that was exciting. Um, growth in our youth program. Uh, we've seen a rise with younger children and with families uh, coming to worship. So that's all been really exciting to be here during that growth spurt that we've had over the last uh, year and a half. Well, I think we're really fortunate. We have <laughs> I've, I consider you know one of the best staffs that I've actually been a part of in my 25 years in ministry. Kirsten Traxel has been a wonderful addition as our director of Christian education. Uh, she was able to attend our um, national Christian educator event last year in Florida and learned a lot about you know what does it take to run a successful children's ministry program from recruitment of teachers to keeping parents informed to picking curriculum to scheduling family type events. She's really been able to um, coordinate all that in the last year since she's been hired and, and really move that program forward. Our church itself has, has been able to connect with groups within the community, Habitat for Humanity, Crop Walk, um, Community Food Initiative, a lot of the, the mission groups that we support locally uh, and we've seen growth in terms of, of both participants, but also just in terms of how we've been able to plug into the different uh, you know, outreach programs here in, in Athens. So I, I think we've gained a little bit of, of higher visibility within the community. The second is not only locally, but nationally and internationally. I mean, we've been able to partner with a church in Washington, D.C., uh, Church of the Pilgrims, uh, to uh, begin that mission process with them this summer as we went and spent uh, a few days down there working. And then we've got uh, a sister church relationship with uh, a church in Chiang Rai, Thailand, which I know we're hoping to further that. So I think just in terms of establishing all those relationships, um, I think we can not only be a force for good here in Athens, but nationally and then hopefully internationally. Um, Mother Teresa once said, it's wonderful to do small things, but with great love. I think that's where we're headed. We may not be able to change all the things that are wrong in the world, but we can certainly, where we live, do small things with great love. I think for me, the the, the kind of uh, things that excite me are when people give talk about transformational stories, when they share a story that, you know, they heard something in the worship service, and then they had some experience during the week, and they remembered what had happened in the worship service, whether it was a hymn that we sung, uh, that we had sung together, whether it was something that I had preached on or something in a prayer, whether it was 
something that happened during the puppet ministry uh, time. And that particular moment will then spark something else in their lives, and then that experience that they had during the week suddenly becomes transformational. That's when it gets really exciting for me because you see the faith come alive at that point. You see people who are willing to maybe forgive where they weren't maybe the week before willing to forgive someone. Or you hear a story about somebody that said, you know, today I went and volunteered at this agency because of something that I heard. Or today I received something in the mail and I wanted to respond to it because I felt I was called to do so because of what happened at church. I think for me that's the that's a really good week when when I hear how the faith has been transformational in someone's life. And it happens a lot around here, which is great. <laughs> oh, I suppose it's like anything else. You know, we, we tend to sometimes focus on the small things and we get caught up on the small things and sometimes lose sight of the big picture. And you try to keep that balance of, you don't want to let the small things become the important things, but you always want to keep your, your, your vision headed toward the kingdom rather than on my kingdom. <laughs> I think Athens has been a, a very welcoming community uh, for my family. Um, we've gotten involved in the Athens Reading Club. We've, we've made lots of friends here that aren't members of the church, but you know acquaintances that I've met either at Donkey Coffee or one of the other places, the farmer's market, uh, and I've gotten to know people through uh, different uh, social settings. Um, I, think, I think Athens has three things that are really going for it that, that my family has appreciated. Number one, um, the people here are just friendly. They really are. It's, uh, people talk to you on the street, they'll say hi. If, if they see something that needs to be done, you'll often see people just stopping and picking up litter on the street or, or you know, making way for somebody if, if, uh, or helping somebody in a store or anything, you know, any number of circumstances where you see people just helping people. Number two, the natural beauty of this place is, you know, one can't help but feel, as uh, Hopkins said, the grandeur of God <laughs> in the hills around this uh, community. And I think the third thing it has going for it is uh, wonderful cultural opportunities. Uh, very few places I know that I can hear uh, folk music on Sunday, go hear a wind ensemble on Monday night, and then attend an Octuba fest the very next night, <laughs> and take in a part of an Athens film festival, uh, all in the same week. Uh, plenty of cultural opportunities. So I think it's, it's uh, you know, the community is blessed by both the university and the, the folks that live here who work in and around the area with, with kind of creative uh, uh, businesses that, that are kind of unique probably to this area. I think of places like Snowville Creamery or um, the Fur Peace Ranch or, you know, just different, different opportunities for people to kind of express themselves creatively in new ways. I guess the amount of involvement that the congregation has in the life of the church and a lot of my other ministries, it's, it was difficult to kind of get people on board and to get people motivated and working. Not that they didn't do it, it just took a while. Here, I almost have to slow people down occasionally just to make sure we can plan and, and have enough resources for what we want to do because there's so much enthusiasm and excitement for the ministry at the church. That's been surprising um, and refreshing. I, I, I really appreciated folks who get an idea for doing something and then run with it. And sometimes I feel like I'm just trying to catch up to them to figure out how I can help them. So that's been a wonderful thing. It's been a surprising journey. I think, you know, you, you have an idea of a place before you come. And then when you're there and you're working and you're trying to um, be a pastor in a new setting in a new church with new people, you always wonder, well, how how is this going to go? And I, I'm, I'm at the proverbial place where I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop because it's gone really well. And I've enjoyed every minute of it, which, uh, you know, I'm, I guess I have that kind of personality anyway where I, I tend to enjoy things no matter where I am, but this, this somehow just feels right.
feels, as, as I've often said to my wife, it just feels like home. As I thought about my ministry in the next, you know, I sort of, you have this sort of vision of a five-year plan when you first come in to, to think about how your first five years might go. And I think I wanted to at least establish um, what I call a trust factor, that people would trust me. They could trust me with information. They could trust me with their loved ones uh, in terms of doing things like weddings and baptisms and funerals. Um, but that they would trust me if I said, here's something we might want to think about together. And I think, so I think that was sort of one of my first goals was to establish a kind of trust bond between the congregation and myself. That seems to, to have happened. I, I, I feel that. Um, and then the second, I think, is to then say together, how can we become um, more involved in the life of the community? Uh, and that might mean you know, talking to the mayor and the city council, to local, you know, police and fire and other folks who, who live and work here in different kinds of settings and just ask them how might we support what they're doing as a church? How might we become more involved in the life of the community? Um, we have lots of folks that do all kinds of things. We have folks that, you know, pack for the food pantry, that work at shelters, that worry about animals, that care about creation, that do all these wonderful things, and yet sometimes we don't get that message out. We don't, uh, we don't necessarily, not that we want to toot our own horn, but that we want to say we're really involved in the, in the life and blood of this community. How do we celebrate that, and then how do we put our own sort of imprint on that as, as a faith community here, here in Athens? And what might we be able to do to support what is already going on here in Athens through what we do as a church? So that would be my, I think, as I see where we are as a faith community, that's kind of where I see us headed in the next year or two.